Welcome to Native America Calling. From Studio 49 in Albuquerque, I'm Tara Gatewood. Stews and soups are great to warm up the body and soul when the cold begins to creep in. Many tribal nations have a stew or soup recipe that's unique to them. A stew or soup can be a mixture of many different ingredients that produce a variety of flavors to satisfy every taste. What stews or soups help you chase away the winter chills? Who's the best stew or soup maker from your corner of Native America? Join us as we discuss cooking up winter stews. And you know, the people of the Seneca Nation have been making uh, delectable stews before the United States was a country. And you know, this corn stew has sustained the years and uh, it's a mix of dry Iroquois white corn similar to hominy. Uh, it's boiled in wood ash to remove it, the hull from the corn. And some say that's where the real flavor comes in. The meats are very, they vary uh, depending on the family and the nation. But today it's usually salt pork. Uh, we were able to catch up with Terry Jones, a.k.a. Corn Soup Man from the Seneca Nation. And Terry is currently a film student at Syracuse University. And he's been making corn soup since he was about 15. And it was his aunt who taught him how to make his corn soup. Uh, he also shared he was born when corn is planted and thinks perhaps that's why his corn soup uh, skills flow. Uh, so here's what he had to say about needing the right mindset to make the mouth-watering corn soup that he's famous for. Uh, first, you got to have a good mind. That's what you're. That's what we're told. First thing, anything that you do, you got to have a good mind. The second thing is like getting the right ratio of water, ashes, and the and the corn together, and the right kind of heat. So every time you make a batch of soup, it's never the same. It's always different. Sometimes it can be very watery. Sometimes it can be. Uh, people like to have like a really almost like a thick gravy consistency to it because then you can sop up your fry bread with it. Um, but now that I'm older, it's not so much of I'm remembering like what I did, what um, how I felt the first time I make made it. The thing that I like to do is I like to teach others how to make it. And uh, and for me, it's it's um, it's very calming and grounding for me because it's a very long process. It can take. Um, I usually prepare the corn soup a day before um, we're going to make it, and it can take like three hours to do three or four hours to do the process. But you know, we live in a country now where it's off. It's like fast food nation. Everything's fast. Every, you know. It's it's always just the destination of eating, and it's not the process. It's not the journey. So when I start making the soup, I put I turn off my phone. I just forget about everything and something just about knowing that I'm doing something that my ancestors have been doing, and I'm still doing it, and I'm teaching someone else to do it. Uh, really makes me, as I said, I, f I forget about technology. I just concentrate and and actually slow down. So there you go, Seneca Corn Soup Man, Terry Jones. And he also says he likes the way cooking uh, this soup makes you use all of your senses, especially in a technology-driven world.